Hi, this is Yosapun Bharti and we are here at QCon and Cloud Native Con here in Atlanta and we have with us once again Billy Thompson, Senior Global DevOps and Platform Engineer Lead in the office of the CTO at Atomai. Billy, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. It's my pleasure. Uh, if I'm not wrong, you helped run a live Capture the Flag workshop where participants had just 90 minutes to build a production-ready Kubernetes internal developer platform from scratch. Talk a bit about that workshop. Okay, so the idea of the workshop was to address the builder versus buyer persona as it relates specifically to the art of platform engineering. What it's pointing out is the complexity and hardship that is involved with building a platform from scratch on Kubernetes, which numerous conversations, be it customers or people at shows like this, it comes up all the time. That's the thing that people want to do or, or wouldn't that work great on Kubernetes? Yeah, it would, but it's a lot of work. So with enough effort and enough work that can lead to a builder persona being pushed in the direction of being a buyer persona and rather spending money on an expensive managed service that wouldn't really be what they ultimately want that could be vendor locking and then you're hoping you get the ROI on that and it just feels like a big miss for the potential within platform engineering. So that's what this wanted to point out is we have the challenges, they go into teams and they have to start building these and you see the effort that's involved in that. And then from there, I can show a methodology or a collection of this, a product like this is what it actually looks like if you do go through all the motions to do this. And here's where there's resources available that have done a lot of that work for you that you can just tap into and use and modify from there. With the idea being that the technique to try to may to try to tame that complexity within platform engineering, the concept of using reusable golden path templates. So your configurations aren't just crazy and you're not just building up a technical debt. You do this one time, you reuse it, that's your stack. But that is another area where there's wheel reinventing, another area to spiral out of control. So if you're thinking in terms of less is more, can you have just one golden path template for the entire IDP? That's possible because people have done it. And this was a demonstration of that. And when you saw that people actually start building internal developer program from scratch. What, what, what surprised you most, how they were doing it, what they were doing? It surprises me the most, even as somebody involved in the workshop, the amount of time it takes to do certain things. So when you're going in through, say, network policies or governance and service mesh, because there's the actual time spent doing the configuration and trying things out, but there's also time spent on what is your strategy for that implementation? Let's just use network policy as an example. What are, what, what is, what is the default that I want that makes sense to me? You know, where would I want to change that? Would that want to be cluster wide? Would it want to be separated by namespace? That's still a logical thought process or plan to go through. It's a whole nother addition of time and evaluation and it just adds up. And so how long that stuff can take still surprises me. And as in the beginning, you said it was more about build versus buy, you know, and um, after you, after it was 90 minutes, you know, as you saw them, you know, go head up, you know, head to head. Where did you also see them struggle the most? Well, this is what I saw, is the people who showed up to this all seemed to be people who knew their stuff. They knew what they were doing. They're familiar with Kubernetes. They're sharp. 
they got into teams. Some of them were friends and made their own teams, and some just got assigned with strangers. But we teamed up with the Learn Kate's crew, who helped put together the challenges, and they walked around and provided hints if people started to get stuck on some things. Just about every table at some point raised their hand to get a hint, which was a good thing because that also means that the challenges themselves were just the right amount of complex. They were activated, they were interested, they were having a good time, and it wasn't too easy that they were getting bored or feeling like it was too one-on-one for them. So I don't know what each table it was exactly what made the hand raise happen, but there was a hand raise even with really, really experienced people who know what they were doing. It was kind of competition as well because they had to do it, so they are competing with each other, other teams. But that could also reflect this community that we live in, that the companies compete in the, in the, in the sales team, but they're the same engineers who collaborate on the code base. So in that situation, how much competition versus collaboration you saw there where teams were actually helping each other as well or you're like they're so focused because of the time pressure because you created a unique kind of situation for them that they were under pressure as well but also they were with their peers and their friends it's interesting that you phrase it that way because i was seeing it more as the competition was just adding some fun to it and the team aspect of it was that community like work together like the, the whole concept of open source and what most of us are doing here for but now that you said it that way yeah i can see where that also represents the other side of the coin you work on teams with a company you have peers that work at other companies you compete but you also feed off each other and the end result is great Sometimes. What kind of takeaway was there for them that they can, despite not being there at the workshop, they can learn because the, the circumstances that you created, you know, as you said, even if you did not realize, but there was a factor of competition, there was a factor of team, but within team, you know, you have different kind of expertise that people who were not at the workshop, they can learn and apply at their workplace. It's hard to say because it's an experience you kind of have to live to learn where a gap exists. You know, you need a frame of reference to see some things. But on that note, so we plan on doing this again, and, and we plan on scaling it more. And we found where some of the rough edges were logistically, and we're going to improve on it and keep doing it. And we're also in that same vein, trying to think of how we could do this virtually online, which is a totally different experience than the first one. And that kind of is in the general direction of, of what you're asking is like, what can they take away from? How do we promote something in a way that they're reading that points out what it is that they would want to take away from it? So that's a work in progress. And that was going to be the next question as well. Are you going to do more of these and what format will that be? So you answered the question uh, already, but uh, uh, if you have any concept idea already in the pipeline that, hey, this is where we are going to do next. The same kind of workshop. You said, you know, this is the first time you did this workshop, right? And you said that you plan to do it. It was not a one-time thing. You want to scale it. So my question to you is that, do you already have the concept for next workshop, when you will do it, where you'll do it, or you're like, you'll do it again. We will figure out when and where. This is initially put together as a workshop idea for this conference. But because of how it went and just the activation and just how it all tied together at the end, how we made sense of app platform, which was the thing I showed at the end, that this is what a polished IDP doing it this way would look like and it was kind of what you can expect at the end of that. With everyone involved, the conversation turned into this is something we should do the next KubeCon. This is something we should do online. Maybe this is something we should tour 
and do globally. So there was kind of an organic learning experience, even for the organizers of it, including me. But I think the initial idea, start small, start with just, let's see what we do for this particular show. If you look at this format, was it more for you to see how teams collaborate or compete to solve the specific problem that you get to build that internal developer platform from a stretch? Or it is more or less like they learn something. So, so do they learn more from it or do they show more what they know? You know what? I mean, you can go to do a workshop to show, hey, this is what I know. This is what I do. Or the second is that they come there and they learn a lot of things as well. So I have two answers. To that. I have the company answer and the personal answer. The company answer would be, we do have this fully open source Apache 2 license, just CNCF projects version of an IDP that works, that simplifies all of that, that is templatable, that's modifiable. I have different workshops where I demonstrate using infrastructure as code to even make that more declarative. And so in that regard, it was to demonstrate how hard this can be and a way to show that this is what that looks like. And here's something you can take from either use it yourself or look at how we did it and learn how we did it to bring that backwards. So that would be the company answer. My personal answer would be that of the problems or patterns that are problematic that we see in the realm of platform engineering, whatever that means to whoever, you hear numbers such as, yeah, 67% of teams are failing at this initiative or then you have analysts giving other metrics to the same thing. And it resembles a paradigm that people can see the value in, but are struggling to succeed in, in a lot of ways. But one issue that I've been observing that I think is getting overlooked is how you approach the complexity of it. Because the complexity in itself being a thing that would take a builder such as me going, actually, I don't have the time and resource for this, or my layers of management are not, this isn't moving fast enough. This isn't solving the problem we think it's solving. Or I guess we could pay for this managed solution and I feel like that's pulling away from kind of the core essence of where platform engineering comes from. If it solves the problem, then it solves the problem. But it's expensive, it's less portable, and the Kubernetes environment is really, really, really good to build this on. When you consider the standardization, standardization, that's an echo all across platform engineering, that's the whole concept. How do you take a tech stack and simplify it? How do you give a team's experience? Because that's why you build platforms. It's for development teams. It's, you don't build it for one team, teams plural. Then you have something with Kubernetes with the namespacing, the, the different data models of it, the portability in that you can run it anywhere that has a compliant managed Kubernetes service or on your own self-hosted. So also something that is scalable in that regard and that is modular and that fits within the binds of what we call cloud native and why we think that matters. So to me, that would be my personal answer why I thought this was a good idea, why I thought this was a helpful exercise because I felt like that was a very sort of resonating experience for the participants, for the organizers, for everyone involved. And I think that in the realm of platform engineering, 
we need more of that because I know there's a lot of hype to the term platform engineering to the extent that there may be a misunderstanding of its use and its effectiveness. But at the end of the tunnel, it does solve a real problem that real people have run into. And if it is the right approach for the type of problems you're having, which is when DevOps becomes a bottleneck at scale, and scale means different things to different companies. It could be the amount of teams that you have geodisperse. It could be one team that has 15 different projects that they work on, whatever scale means. But that be the problem where platform engineering comes to solve. I want to see that problem continue to be solved. The methodology does make sense when applied correctly. And we sometimes have to work backwards and do things the hard way to see when and where that is. You said that you will be doing these kind of workshops more in future. Will the topic will also remain same to build into a developer platform? Or as the time passes, you will focus more on the pressing problems there where you see that, hey, this is where teams should come together, you know, or this is where people can learn from each other. So the format may remain same, nine team in competition, but the topics team may evolve. And if yes, what are the themes in your pipeline that you're like, hey, this is what I want to explore next? I like that question. Initially, my thought is I want to still just keep it the fun games, the capture the flag, you know, with this kind of meaning to it that is surfaced at the end of it. And that's something that is sticky to people that participate. But what you just mentioned also sounds awesome. And that gives me more to think on about it and what steps we could maybe take with it to highlight that specifically because that's really important. Billy, once again, thank you so much for joining me today and talk about this unique kind of competition, cooperation. I mean, it, it kind of is a microchasm of the community that I see where we compete and we cooperate when we sneak at the code, but also for the purpose, hey, let's not do that because they are doing it wrong. We are doing a better job. But thank you so much for sharing it. And uh, I look forward to chat with you again. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about it and for giving me some new perspective to go back and reflect on that I can use to shape this moving forward.